Me now is Dr. Shai Efrati and Bill Falloon joining us from a distance. Gentlemen, a pleasure to have you both on the show. Happy to be here. So I'd like to ask you, Bill, we just saw this amazing facility and it is incredible. You have no idea what the ramifications and implications are, not only in medicine, but in other areas. So please go ahead and be introduced. Well, just so you know, Dr. Shai, um, we, we looked at the data that you produced at the end of November and we're incredibly impressed. The idea that you were able to elongate telomeres to the point where some of these people had telomeres that were the length of 25 years earlier in their lifespan. I don't believe that's ever been demonstrated before. Uh, are you aware of any other research that was able to elongate telomeres to that length? You are absolutely right. This is the first time in humans that we are able to demonstrate that we have an intervention, a therapy that can actually elongate the telomere. Until now, everything that we had at best was to preserve the telomere. So this, this is huge because we can actually demonstrate at the cellular level that we can take the biological aspect of aging back in time. We can actually reverse aging. It's not slowing down, it's taking it backwards in time. Now this is, this is huge because from different aspects. Well, just to review the data, you were able to demonstrate elongation of telomeres. You were able to demonstrate a reduction in the senescent cell burden of the immune system, which is impressive. Yeah. Uh, and, and you were able to see some improvements in immune functions. Were there any other baseline tests and follow-up evaluations done to see if there were other indicators of age reversal occurring? The research program that we have now in Israel is probably one of the most comprehensive research program on what we call normal aging, okay? So what we are doing in this program, we are taking people who are 65 year or older, fully potent, okay, fully active, no diabetes, non-smoker, doing exercise, non-obese, okay? The best of the best, us, fully functioning, okay? And we are taking this population, randomize them into two groups. One of them received the unique protocol. It's not the standard hyperbaric oxygen therapy that is usually common here in the US. It's something that is completely different and people need to come and see and understand in what ways. And compare it to the normal people who are aging normally. And in this study, we are evaluating everything. For example, brain, Everybody who is in the program have high resolution MRI, including perfusion, functional MRI, NDTI MRI. It means that we can actually see the nerve fibers themselves. We are doing a full battery of computerized cognitive testing, physical performance, MRI of the heart, a senescent cell, telomeres, a skin biopsies, everything. So this is the most comprehensive. People are coming for four days of full evaluation. We evaluate at the beginning and along, along the study protocol. So indeed for the first time we can demonstrate that in the brain that we can actually take the tissue back in time. Okay? We can regenerate brain tissue, generate new blood vessels in the brain, improve the cognitive function. This was published, uh, we have published that something like seven years ago. And now we have took it after evaluating the physical, the physiological function related to the brain, demonstrating in the brain that we can generate tissue, generate blood vessels. We took it to the cellular level. And these are the telomere on the senescent cell. And indeed, for the first time in humans, we can demonstrate clearly that the biology of aging, the basic biology of aging can be reversed. Now, this is exciting. It's just like if you need to compare it to something, it's like landing for the first time on the moon. Okay. So people see now that it's feasible. We can actually land the moon. So many young scientists today are, are approaching us and want to dedicate their career for doing research on the aging biology and how it can reverse, like happened with the first time that people landed on the moon then many young, talented individuals say, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be part of that. 
okay? Because I can improve it even better. Maybe we can get to the moon faster, in a faster way. And let's go to Merch now, okay? Because we are already landed on the moon. So that's what happened with this, with this amazing uh, results that we had. Well, let me ask, please, this new study that you're doing in Israel will incorporate the hyperbaric five days a week? Exactly that. This is currently the intervention that we have. Okay, we are taking people, we are putting them in a chamber, it's a multi-place chamber, you sit inside, and what we are doing when the patient is in, it's not a patient, it's a normal individual, when they are inside, we are making fluctuation with the oxygen. We are taking the oxygen to very high, increasing the blood oxygenation from 100 to 1700, and then asking them, by a certain protocol that looks, now it looks easy, but it took us 20 years to investigate that, taking the mask off, and when they are taking it off, there is a fast decline from very high back to the normal. This decline from very high level of oxygen back to the normal, it triggers the body for stem cells proliferation, and with each session, the stem cells are going up to generate new blood vessels, change the activation of the mitochondria. And these are the things that are being treated with this fluctuation, including elongation of telomeres at the cellular level. And that is the fascinating thing. So this is basically two hours in your hyperbaric room. It's not really a chamber. It's a nice room where maybe they can work on their laptops while they're sitting there. And then you, you give them the oxygen, supplemental oxygen for periods of time, and then you stop it to, to avoid any type of lung injury. Is that the protocol you'll be following in Israel? It's more than that. It's not to avoid the lung injury. The fluctuation that we generate while you are sitting in the suite, in the hyperbaric suite, the fluctuation that we generate, that's what trigger the regenerative, the repair mechanism in our body. Okay, so the fluctuation is more important than the total oxygen itself. It's a combination of the two. And you know, I'm playing a lot in the lab, in my lab. I'm privileged to have a good, uh, let's say, significant research unit. So I'm playing a lot in my lab also with stem cells, okay? And I can cure anything in mice and rats. I'm an excellent physician of rats. When somebody come to me with a severe disease, I, told, I always tell them, I wish you were a rat or a mice, then I can cure you. But the stem cells, even though we have very good results in the preclinical and in the mice and rats model, in humans, it's not so effective. So we're taking, at least not in our hands. If you are due in general statistics, you may have good results. But in one-on-one, -on -one, the effect, the clinical effect was not significant enough. So what we are doing, instead of taking stem cells out and injecting them, by using this protocol of fluctuation, we actually trigger the body, trigger the stem cells on the body to start to proliferate. And by doing that, we are increasing the amount of stem cells from each session to the other. After 20 sessions, 20 to 30 sessions, you have huge amount of stem cells that are flying all over and looking for places to settle down. We keep them up for additional two months, and then we have these amazing effects. That's tremendous. What, what I'd like to review, if I can, is the specific protocol. Are, are you going to be involving any type of nutritional interventions, dietary pattern changes, uh, increases in physical activity? This is an excellent question. So when we are doing a clinical study, for example, in Israel, in the clinical study that we done, and it's still ongoing, the only intervention is hyperbaric. So for example, we had, in the study, we have an elongation of the telomere of something like 20 to 25%, which is huge. But here, for example, in the clinic, when it's not a research, it's not clinical research, then we are doing a multidiscipline intervention, meaning we are adding to the hyperbaric the other things that we know that might work intermittent fasting, physical exercise, certain cognitive enhancement. And what we have over here, we have better results than the results we had in the clinical study. We have here prolongation of telomeres with an average of 40%, which is double 
the size that we had in, in the clinical study. Why? Because we are adding other intervention freely to the hyperbaric. Then the effect is synergistically. And also with regard to cognitive, when we are synergizing that, and you are doing cognitive training while in the chamber, like we are doing over here, you have a better results. So you are absolutely right. There is a synergistic effect between the things. Right. And we totally concur with that, by the way. Uh, every research protocol that we design, we want to make sure people are consuming healthy foods, avoiding the toxic ones, intermittent fasting if they're able to. Uh, in other words, we're, we're not looking to take a person who does not take care of their health overall. They may be metabolic syndrome, obese, type 2 diabetes, and it's reversible, but they refuse to do it. And they sometimes want to enter our clinical trials. And we say, no, we, we can't offset all of the inflammatory problems you're generating by your poor lifestyle choices. So I, I appreciate you're going to put these people onto a solid program, a rather extensive set of what we call just the conventional surrogate markers of aging, the lipids, glycemic markers, inflammatory markers. What we do with our research is we get baseline measures. We have something called an age management panel, and it, it allows us to evaluate all types of pathologies early on uh, before the study uh, commences. And then after we initiate treatment, we can then follow up and see, are we improving some of these surrogate markers? And I call them surrogate markers because as people grow older, as you know, their blood pressure typically increases, uh, lipids, uh, glucose control, it all worsens. And if you can demonstrate improvements in some of the conventional measures of aging and age-related disorders, it'll add on to the uh, benefits of, of course, telomere elongation, removal of senescent cells. But this is tremendous what you're talking about. How many people will be enrolled in this study? It's not being involved. It's already been involved. <laughs> so the first part of the study, just to clarify, our ability to improve the cognitive function and to improve the brain tissue, as you can see it in high resolution MRI, perfusion DTI, that's what's already done. Our ability to demonstrate that the physical performance is improving, that was already done. The part related to the telomere and senescent was already done. So what's happening now is that we have affiliated centers that are being established around the world. One of them is here in Florida, in the villages, which is the biggest hyperbaric facility here in the U.S. Uh, it includes not only to high-end chambers or suite, as we call them. It includes the highest, most advanced MRI, neuropsychology, cognitive evaluation. As you heard before, we evaluate function, so you are on a treadmill. We can see exactly, it's not a standard treadmill. We can see exactly where your foot is there. You are doing cognitive training while you are doing exercise, so there will not be a ceiling effect. All of this is already been established. Okay, that was done. So now we have the center around the world that are collaborating. And any additional data that we have is immediately implanted in each of these center. So the center that we have now in the villages, just this is the biggest, it's the hub for educating the other centers that are gonna be established, for example, in New York, in Manhattan, etc., etc. And we have additional center. There will be in London. We have an already operating center in Dubai. And all of these are collaborating together. The people and the medical staff over here was educated in Israel for the certificate. And now this will be the hub for educating the other center in the U.S. So what you're doing basically is a multi-center clinical study of this protocol. It's, it's not a clinical study. It's treatment. In clinical study, we have a control group. So in this part that we are speaking about, it's not a study. It was already in, demonstrated in the studies that were published already. So here we are doing a scale up of what we are doing in Israel to other locations around the world. Well, essentially you're doing a case series study where every patient has their own record and then you'll, you'll merge that together at some point to see what type of average data you're seeing and, and possibly report on each case, which is some of the research uh, types of modalities that we're doing right now. So I appreciate very much 
how you're approaching this. It makes sense. In other words, you're not putting people on an assembly line. You're treating each patient and then seeing what the overall outcome is with both the group and the individual patients. That's absolutely tremendous. The way it goes, the program, the program starts first with evaluation. Okay, there's a three days of evaluation. And during that days, we evaluate almost everything. Brain, MRI, perfusion, functional MRI, cognitive test, physical performance, uh, telomere, senescent, that we are doing a standard to everybody that is going in, full DNA analysis. Once we are doing that, then we are seeing if the individual is suitable for the treatment suitable for the program. And when I'm saying suitable, it means that we have more than 80% chance to improve him. Okay? It's actually more than 90%, but I'm saying 80% chance to improve him. If we think so, then he will go through the program. Now, the program is 60 sessions, six zero, five days per week. Each session is two hours. You indeed sit in the suite. And while you sit in the suite, you have a screen, a laptop that you can work with. And the cognitive training that you will get while you are sitting in the chamber is aiming to stimulate the specific brain area that we saw in the functional MRI that we need to enhance their capacity. So the stem cells will go mostly to there. And by that, we have a synergistic effect that utilizes what we have learned in the evaluation period in order to stimulate the brain even more. So you've got cognitive activity being uh, induced by virtue of the testing they're doing while they're in the chamber, getting the high oxygen flow that they're breathing, plus the hyperbaric pressure. Uh, that's a tremendous combination. Yeah, indeed. How many patients have you seen so far since opening up in the villages? <laughs> I can tell you that in Israel, we are currently treating more than 300 patients per day. Wow, 300 patients a day in Israel. A day in Israel. This is the largest center. People are coming from all over the world. And now we have the center that are being established that are starting uh, to work and with the ramp up. It's not at the level in Israel, but, but it's becoming more and more. In Israel, unfortunately, we have an unbelievable waiting list. Uh, so that's why we have now the affiliated centers and soon there will be additional in the U.S. Not so soon because it takes time to establish a center like this, but in the near years. Bill, what's going on here is absolutely incredible. You'll be seeing the footage shortly. And uh, Dr. Fati, before we conclude, please share with our audience and with Bill your final thoughts with regard to the present and future and the significance of this. If we are speaking about aging perspective, for the first time, we should not take age-related functional for granted. Actually, we can demonstrate that the biological deterioration related to the aging process can be reversed, not only slowed down. And we see it at the cellular level, at the DNA level with the telomere, we see it at the cellular function level with the senescent cells. Senescent cells are the aging non-functional cells that we can take them off. And we can see it also at the tissue level when we are looking at the most important tissue that we have in our body, which is the brain. And we can see it at the functional level when we are looking at the cognitive function and the physical function. So for the first time, we can say that we can improve or reverse the age-related functional decline at all levels. And that's open a new area, a new area, an area that hopefully in the near decade, I hope it will be sooner, five years earlier, 